Who should you draft and who should you stay the heck away from? We've got your answers in the Starters Fantasy Preview. Good evening, sweet world! And welcome to the Starters Fantasy Basketball Preview Show. Whether you're listening to the podcast, catching us on NBA TV, we're very, very happy to have you back for the second season of NBA Fun. I'm J.D. Skeets, and alongside me, as always... It's Tass Mellis. I guarantee this season will be fun. To guarantee. My right, to my right, it's the starter's blog editor, Trey Kirby. Hey-o! 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 And finally, it's the Aussie. It's Lee Ellis. Girl. Mm-hmm. Lee, Lee. Lee, Lee, all right. On tonight's show, the NBA season, a few weeks upon us here, so a lot of you are gearing up for your NBA fantasy basketball drafts, and we're here to help you out. We'll tackle some key questions, some sleepers, maybe some guys to avoid. We'll break this down into three separate positions, guards, centers, and we'll start with the forwards. And look, a tough spot here. Uh, look, uh, the fantasy drafts changed. I hope you haven't had yours yet because this weekend we learned that, of course, the reigning MVP, Kevin Durant, has a fracture in his right foot and will likely miss at least the first month of the season. We're getting anywhere between six to eight weeks. That's what the Thunder's saying. He has a Jones fracture, which is a broken bone at the base of the small toe. So the question is, if you haven't had your draft yet, what do you do with KD uh, on the clock? I mean, at the number one spot or does he go even go in the top three still anymore? What do you think? I think he drops a few spots. I had him ranked at number one, mm-hmm. but I'd right. go with him at the number seven spot behind LBJ, Davis, Curry, Harden, Westbrook, and Love. He's going to miss about 20 games, but when that ring comes and it's your time to pick, you hear that chime, yep. are you going to think short term or long term? Because 20 games you might think uh, you, you might want to pull the trigger on a guy who's going to play at the beginning of the season. But you got to think long term with Kevin Durant. For me, anyways, my second, third round picks, they're going to get me to the playoffs and then KD is going to bring it home. And look at this I've already guy. got it planned out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tess has already won this league yeah, that we haven't obviously. even done yet. Uh, you think you see, like a winner. You see KD there. I mean, he's arguably been the best fantasy basketball player over the last four or five years. Very durable as well. And that bodes well for a lot And it sort of depends whether or not you're doing a rotisserie league or a head-to-head league, you know, whether or not you draft them. But, Lee, I want to know, you know, when we do our draft yeah. and Katie's still there, let's say, and you got the, f- the fifth or sixth pick, somewhere around oh. what Tass was saying, do you pull the trigger and take him? The fifth and sixth spot is just the worst spot right now for right. because you kind of have to take him there. You really don't want him to slip any lower. But we don't know exactly how long he's going to be out for. There's still two weeks before the season, so hopefully he's only going to miss four weeks of action, maybe not. As you said, he's a very durable player, so hopefully he comes back on the uh, shorter end of that six to eight weeks. But I can sense uh, it. You're already panicking. Uh, I am panicking. I'm, I'm <laughs> nervous already. I don't right. know what to do. I don't even want to know now what's going to happen. I want to get that first or second pick so you don't even have to consider taking him. <laughs> I want to know what this now means for all the Russell Westbrook fans out there and how high he jumps up on your yeah. draft board because this guy could be leading the oh, league yeah. in scoring usage rate, you would think so, yep. without Durant there for a month or so. John Schumann, Schumann's stat, sort of a stat, yeah, that's a stat, already early in the season here. Westbrook played only 41 minutes without Durant last season. He attempted 35 <laughs> shots in those 41 that's a minutes. a little low, actually. That is a little low. You think it'd be a bit higher. So, yeah, again, if you're in a head-to-head league with Westbrook, you can sort of punt categories like yep. turnovers and maybe field goal percentage because that could even yep. drop with more shots. But he is going to put up a whole lot of points. He's been a triple-double machine playing with Kevin Durant and playing without Kevin Durant, like you're saying. He's just going to have all the opportunity in the world. And the offense, as we've seen, with uh, even when Kevin Durant's around with Scotty Brooks, is kind of rudimentary. So you figure Westbrook will just have the ball, getting to dribble like crazy, go at the rim as hard as he can and throw it up. He's going to have the opportunity and yeah. he's going to take it. Yeah, oh, sure. He's absolutely yeah. going to take it. Well, let's keep going here. After LeBron and then after guys like Curry and Harden, we'll get to the guards, as I said later. Who's the next best forward? in fantasy basketball terms. It's Anthony Davis for me. This is year three for Anthony Davis, and it feels like year four or five or six because we already saw him take off in year two, but this is the third season for an NBA player, usually when a guy explodes, but he already exploded in his second season. And I know Trey's got Kevin Love, which is obviously a great pick, but I go with Anthony Davis over Kevin Love, not only because he wins you the dirty categories that I like. In in a week, he can easily win you the blocks or the steals, but. Anthony Davis is going to be looked for on every possession, while Kevin Love might be overlooked on a lot of possessions, playing with two superstars, unlike his days with the Minnesota Timberwolves. There's a lot of guys on the Pelicans who like to get shots up, too, though. I know, but they're going to be playing pick and roll with Anthony Davis. You've got to think Drew Holiday is going to look for him on every single play. You see the jump from season one to season two. It's got to go up in season three, right? I mean, Kevin Love been in the league for six years. You kind of know what you're going to get playing with LeBron, 
Kyrie Irving. We'll see what it did to Chris Bosh's numbers in a second going from Toronto to Miami. The same is going to happen for Kevin Love, and I think Davis is the right pick. Lee, you agree with AD. I mean, look at those numbers. Yeah. 2010, he's tw not even, what, 21 years old? Even that... prior to Kevin Durant's injury, I was actually considering taking Anthony Davis so I get that pick at number right. one because I think you could see this guy maybe going for 23, 24 a game, 12 rebounds. He led the league in blocks per game last year. He could easily get three or more blocks a game, and he's apparently worked on his corner three-point shot. Gonna add the three I, point I'm, shot I'm, for I'm not on. saying anything. I'm not saying anything, but I'm just, I read that he's going to be in the corner if he's running pick and roll down <laughs> yeah, the middle yeah, of the yeah. court. So what? He's so, doing everything. So you obviously don't think Kevin Love's numbers are going to fall off all that much. We're I'm sure they'll now fall off LeBron a little bit, but the, you guys are talking about the Anthony Davis jump. His jump would have to be catastrophic to get to Kevin Love's numbers. And even if Love falls off, he's still going to be averaging 20 points a game. He's still going to be one of the best rebounders in the game. His field goal percentage, you would think, is only going to go up. He gives you assists and threes that you don't get from a big man usually. Yeah, he's not giving you a ton blocks and steals, but you can make that up otherwise. I think that the added efficiency is going to be worth it to take Kevin Love ahead of Anthony Davis. He's, he's going to get a ton of space. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. Uh, yeah, the threes are going to be there from, yeah, the, from threes, the power forward yeah. big position. That, that's what it's I think is nice. going to be the best for him. He's just going to be so open because LeBron's still going to command those double teams and Kevin's just going to be sitting on the on the, on the the wing there and be knocking down jumpers all day. And he's going to have a lot of guys to pass to, which is why you're going to see a lot of assists. Well, you're not, still, you're, you're not worried about the superstar slash really you call it the LeBron. Effect. I would say that Chris Bosh and Kevin Love have different personalities and I don't think Kevin Love will fall off like Chris Bosh did. He's not going to want to take as much of a backseat role as Chris Bosh. Bosh's number there in that last Last year in Toronto, you know, unbelievable fantasy numbers, 24-10, and they and they took a dip. Oh, they took five hold. points a game yeah. and about three shots per game. And I think LeBron will have learned this being the second time coming over with a fantastic power forward. But now we've got Kyrie Irving who also has to learn the ball is going to be in his hands, it's going to be in LeBron's hands. And I think Love sort of takes a back seat. Huge thing for Anthony Davis too is he doesn't have to play center this year. They went and got Omar Asik. Yeah. It's not going to have to bang as much. And you can kind of compare his numbers to another fantastic center. To a young Who's Hakeem Olajuwon when he yeah. was Hakeem back Not in the 85, 86. I mean, the numbers are very, very close. They're second year. And Hakeem, when he went into his third year with the Rockets way back when, if you were playing fantasy basketball way back then, yeah. hats <laughs> off to you. But they were like very similar, very similar to those. Davis, we think, is going to jump, and that's that makes sense to me because Akeem was like 24 going in that third yeah. year. Davis is still 21 years old. Yeah, and he's so 25 and 12 is not out yeah. of the question. Yet. Yeah, especially if you saw him in the Team USA as well. He's bulked up a lot, yep. and he's got that confidence in that mid-range game. So Davis, I think, is going to be in for a big, big year. I like how we're talking about it. it's corner threes, mid-range game, <laughs> pick and roll. But he has. I heard he's going to referee some position. games. He's going to referee <laughs> games this year while he's playing. All right, let's get to the sleepers with the forwards position. Here's a sleeper test that uh, people should be looking deep in the draft. Wow, I'm very going, deep I'm going to the draft. extremely <laughs> deep with Jonas Trepko. This is a sleeper. This is a hibernator. Don't pick this guy. <laughs> Not. Right. However, I think you can get him on your waiver wire, and it's going to make a ton of sense because Stan Van Gundy is the coach of this Detroit Pistons team, and he's already said he's not just going to throw out Greg Monroe, Josh Smith, and Andre Drummond in the 3-4-5 spots as his primary lineup. That's not going to happen. Didn't work. <laughs> Ron Butler is going to start at the small forward position, it seems. But Jonas Terepko just has so much more potential to me than Karan Butler. Sam Van Gundy has said that this guy has been working his butt off, the hardest piston working his butt off during the summer season. And that's because he's playing for a contract, not only playing for a contract, but also possibly playing for his NBA career. I mean, he looks like a, at a guy like Hashim Thabit, who's in Pistons camp, who's got an unguaranteed contract, might be out of the league very soon, or a guy like Jan Vesely, for instance. He's playing for his life. And now, don't go pick this guy now. It makes right. no wait. sense. Wait till he's playing. But I think he's going to play a lot of minutes on this Pistons team eventually. Lee, do you have a guy that they should actually consider picking? Yeah, it's Ersan Ilyasova from the Milwaukee Bucks. A bit of a forgotten man out there as well. His season was derailed last year due to injury, but in March, 15 points a game, 7 rebounds, 51% from the field, and 82% from the line in 10 games. Now, there's an opportunity in Milwaukee. That's what I like about it. They've got Jabari, Giannis, I expect to have a good season. But someone, he's kind of like a veteran now to these yeah. younger guys, so I think there's an opportunity for him to get you some sneaky points. Ilyasova. And he doesn't give you a lot else other than the points, rebounds, and good percentages, though. Is sneaky points one of the categories? <laughs> I'm adding our, it to our league, okay? We've got sneaky league? points, yeah. Trey, sleeper forward. I love uh, Josh McRoberts on the Heat. I think he's going to be a great for, fit for them. He was career highs basically across the board last year for the Bobcats, and they were a slow-down, post-up team. Now he's playing in a pace and space system. People with a coach you know, like Eric Spolstra, who's going to know how to use a stretch four, and he's playing with a lot better teammates, and he's going to get a ton of minutes because it's basically him and Udonis Haslam.
Gotta like the assist. Yeah, I, yeah, I, like, I, like, I like that. I like that pick. Yeah. He could, you know, he yeah. could easily be uh, four and a half again, or five, something like and that. If you get the points for behind the back passes, you're probably gonna win every week. Yeah. I'm, my uh, my sleeper, the forward position, uh, Draymond Green, and, and I sort of. In the same boat as Tassie, maybe don't draft this guy unless you're in a very, very deep league, but I would keep an eye on Green because his numbers were great when he got minutes. He just didn't get a whole lot of minutes last year, but I think Steve Kerr coming in there as the new head coach is going to like his defense. But can anybody like him more than Mark Jackson did? And his versatility. I, I actually think he's going to get more minutes. Of course, just being older, I just think Kerr's going to realize what he can do out there and how important Real he is. Real blue guy, yeah. And when he plays, I mean, we saw him in the playoffs last year. In seven games there in the playoffs, he was putting up like 12, 8, and 3, hitting a 3 as well. And combined defense was like three and a half. Again, obviously very, very small sample size in the playoffs. But if he gets minutes, pick him up right away. And, and you never know with the Warriors, too, if, if Barnes is traded or sure. Iguodala or something like that. You want to keep an eye on Green. Let's go from the sleepers to guys just to, you know, flat out avoid. Both think, you and, and Lee saying Greg Monroe. Yeah, I think Greg Monroe of the Pistons is going to come off the bench. Stan Van Gundy is not going to play three guys who can't shoot. Andre Drummond is playing at the center spot. He's going to try and make him his Dwight Howard from his Orlando days. Josh Smith beside him. I kind of was hesitant to pick this because Greg Monroe is going to eat up second units. He's going to destroy yeah, them. And he's playing but for I don't a contract, see, right? He is, yeah. Yeah, but I don't see the minutes there. I think he's just not going to play a ton. What about you, Trey? I'm kind of worried about Ryan Anderson just because he's a guy who gets hurt a lot anyways. He's coming back from a neck injury, and you just kind of can't count on him. I wouldn't think. Maybe if he's great down the road, trade for him. I love David West. I just think uh, people are reaching a little too much because they're expecting, well, the offense, now that Paul George is in there and Lance is gone, he's going to score 20 a game. I just don't see that happening. I would get West, but don't go taking him in the sixth round. I think that's a little too early. Lots more still to come. We'll turn our attention to the guards of fantasy basketball, sleepers, busts, and who's the number one guard to draft? Is it Harden or is it Curry? Or heck, is it Chris Paul? So don't go anywhere. You're watching the start. Welcome back to the Starters Fantasy Preview Show. We've talked about the forwards. Let's turn our attention to the guards and the question for everyone here at the table and everyone listening, by the way. Join in on Twitter. Hashtag the Starters with your opinions is, who's the number one fantasy guard? The three of you guys go in Steph Curry. I'll play devil's advocate a little bit and go <laughs> James Harden just because the numbers are so, so close. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're going to get more threes, yes, from Curry, but you're going to get way more free throws from James Harden, who immediately goes to line at least twice more than Curry, and, and of course yep. knocks him down with consistency. And not that Curry doesn't, you know, knock down the free throws yeah. well as well, but just James just gets there so much more. Interact some other guys on your team, maybe. Right. I'm going, I'm going James just because you got Chandler Parsons leaving. I expect huge years from Harden and Howard. And with Curry, the new coach scares me a little bit, and just wondering if his numbers dip a bit because they just got to do, they want to go through Bogut a little bit more. I mean, maybe the assists go up, but I don't know if Curry's going to be scoring as much. So that's why I go hard. This is Steph Curry. I'm actually excited with Steve Kerr in the mix. I think they're going to distribute the ball a little bit more. I think Steph Curry's going to come off the ball a little bit, not bring it up each and every time. LaShawn Livingston, Andre Iguodala, Clay Thompson taking some turns. I see the efficiency going up. I, I don't see it scaling back whatsoever. Mark Jackson played a little bit of the isolation basketball. A lot of they had the ups. 12th best offense last year. That's not good enough right. for a team that that's good with their that good with their starting five. I think Curry's numbers are going up. I'm taking Curry. The and truth is, you can't go wrong with either of these. Yeah, guys. and you would think with Steve Kerr as the coach, nobody's going to want to utilize the three pointer more than a guy who's one of the greatest yeah, three point sure. shooters of all time. And yeah. that's also why I'm into Curry because he's a lot more fun to watch than Harden. I've had James Harden on a fantasy team, and when you're just counting on a guy to go to the line every time, it's not as cool as you know pulling up from 30 feet. It's not as sexy. Dribble. It's think, not as sexy. Think about Curry off the ball, though. I mean, yeah. he is going to destroy teams, and I think that's where Kerr comes in. Well, Steve Kerr's already mentioned that he wants to ease his workload, so his assist might actually drop. Down, but his points per game and his three pointers could even increase depending on just how he operates there. And James Harden knows that everyone kills him for his bad defense. He's mentioned it. He said he's working on his defense. He's going to be a better defender. That's going to take away from his offense. Yeah. He's going to be tired on the defense. Event. He's just saying. Working that. Too no, hard. He knows. Don't he knows. worry. He, wa he watches the YouTube video. All right, let's get to the uh, sleepers at the guard position. Some guys that people should be keeping their eye on sort of later in the draft. Test. Jose Calderon of the New York Knicks. Sometimes fantasy is just about getting minutes. I don't see Derek Fisher playing 
any other point guard besides Jose Calderon. The numbers aren't spectacular, but the minutes will be spectacular. I'd pick him. Lee is buying into the George Hill hype once well, again. You mentioned already they've lost Paul George, Lance Stevenson. You don't think David West is going to score. Someone has to score points <laughs> for the Indiana Pacers. I'm going with George Hill. Average 14 points and five assists two seasons ago. I think he can get close to that again. Trey with a very deep sleeper in Ben <laughs> Gordon? <laughs> Something what? tells me he's going to be available in your drafts. Yeah. But the Magic lost Aaron Aflalo and Jameer Nelson. Uh, uh, Jacques Vaughn probably needs to start winning. Might go with a veteran, and supposedly Ben Gordon has been flexing those biceps. Reggie Jackson <laughs> is my sleeper. I made this pick even before the Durant news because if Come this on. guy gets minutes, Lee, and this is now it's even better. Yeah, he's probably not going to go that low in most drafts now, but he gets the minutes he performs. 24 games last year when he played 32 minutes or more, he was putting up your 15, 5, and 5 with the threes and great percentages. Yep. So this guy, you know, if he's there late, pick up Reggie Jackson. This man's playing for a contract as well. Yeah, that's right. All right, let's go. Uh, Go from the sleepers to the bus, or maybe guys to avoid. Bus yeah, seems bus so, is a harsh word. Yeah, it seems so rude. But for, the, for the talented guys that we're picking here. Yeah, Tass has Dwayne Wade, <laughs> Lee, Darren Williams, <laughs> Trey, Isaiah Thomas, and myself, Derek Rose. Yeah, there's a lot of talent on that list. Yeah, I'll start off here with the Dwayne Wade talk. I mean, you want to win, you got to have guys that are on the floor. And, and Dwayne Wade, he is going to take some games off. I, I think you have to expect that. Sure. He was projected to be the 33rd best fantasy player this year. He was 46th last year, so I don't understand how you can pick him that high. A guy who played only 54 regular season games. Bust is just a harsh word, but you can't win fantasy if your guys don't play. Think about it going into April. The Miami Heat are going into the playoffs. Is Dwayne Wade going to suit up each and every game? He's not going to suit up for the Miami Heat or your fantasy team. <laughs> That's just a little too high for Dwayne Wade. Lee, Darren Williams. Stay away from him. He's missed 50 games over the last four seasons. He missed 18 last year. And even when he does play, the production's just not there. 14 points and six assists last year for your starting point guard. He's got an assist to turnover ratio, too, of three to one. He's got a new coach coming in this year. We know that he struggles in those big moments, in those big games as well. I don't think his confidence is there. He's not the leader he once was, especially out in Utah. He's just not a player that you want to pick up early on. The lowest, lowest number since his rookie year yeah. right there. Trey, Isaiah Thomas, this one surprised me. A bit. Why, why are you not picking up on that? I just don't really think he's going to touch the stats he put up last year because he had 35 minutes a game where he got to dribble the ball as much as he wanted, and he wanted to dribble it a lot last year. Now playing with the Suns, there's he's the third point guard. They share the ball a lot. I just don't think he's going to have a chance to make as big of an impact. He'll probably be a better player, but that doesn't necessarily translate to fantasy. You don't see 20 points per game like you saw. That would be pretty rare. Yeah, and, I, and I'm going D-Rose. Look, I hope D-Rose plays the entire season. I really do, but I don't want to be that guy. Again, that has D-Rose. <laughs> Tough one. To and then you get the alert on your phone that he's gone down. You know, heaven forbid it doesn't happen. But the guy's played 49 out of the last 230 NBA games. Let someone else take D-Rose. You know, just let someone else do yeah. it. I want to sleep at night, okay? <laughs> I really do. So there you go. There's some guys to, to maybe avoid. Got to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll get to the centers. You're watching the starters. The pun gun is back. Welcome back to the Starters Fantasy Preview. We've done forwards, guards, into the centers. Now, this is a tricky sort of weird position in fantasy basketball because a lot of guys get the forward slash center eligibility. Guys like Anthony Davis, Kevin Love, and Aldridge. But let's say you can't pick those guys and you sort of got to go with a real center. Who's the best of the rest? Tass and Trey, you're going DeMarcus. Why? Yeah, Davis is the number one center. DeMarcus Cousins is the number two center. I know everyone says it every single year, but this is the year for DeMarcus Cousins. <laughs> oh boy. This is it. It's time you bump him up from the 32 minutes played to the 36, like your Love, your Griffin, your Aldridge, your big guys, because this is his team. I mean, he's going to lead this team to 30 wins. He can do it. <laughs> yeah, and last year was kind of the year for him, too, because as you see, he scored and he rebounded really well, and now he's going to have the ball even more. His num huge numbers. Yeah, numbers are impressive. Lee, Joakim Noah. Yeah, this what? is a bit of a personal decision because I've owned DeMarcus Cousins the last couple of years. He's got the ejections and okay. suspensions. He's a fantastic fantasy player when he plays, but he frustrates you as well, and I just have to stay away from him this year. And, and I'm oh. going with I'm oh. going Chris Bosh. You showed us the numbers earlier there, Tass. Without LeBron, when he was with the Raptors, the guy was like 24, 11, and 3, you know, good percentages. Now he's added the three-point shot to his game. Maybe he's old. I don't think they're going to be that Wade didn't play for the Raptors. But, man, he's going to put up some good numbers. Chris Bosh is my – he's always underrated when it comes to fantasy basketball. He had, like, top 20 production last year, and he goes something – he gets drafted, like, 45th, 46th. Occasionally that happens every year. So I would – I keep an eye on Chris Bosh. But let's get to the sleepers at the center position. Who are people sleeping on? 
Jared Seliger for me with the Boston Celtics is a sleeper. Can you guys name another big on the Boston Celtics? Kelly Olenek. Yeah, that's Canadian. True. Jared Seliger is going to get Tyler plenty Zeller. minutes. The point is, he's going to get a ton of minutes. There's no doubt about it. Tyler Zeller might see the floor. <laughs> Jared Seliger, combined with the fact that it's his third year, combined with the fact that, hey, they just don't have a lot of talent up there, the guy is going to play 130th. Don't draft him, but pick him up later on. You know, when you, you go to the waiver wire, this guy produces. Lee JaVale McGee. Yeah, he oh only, boy. only played five games last season. Now, I know it's a it bit of a reach, could be but right now this is well. the sort of guy who can every now and again have one of those weeks where he puts up 13, 15 rebounds. He can win you block shot categories just himself. He got uh, two blocks per game playing only 18 minutes two seasons ago. He's only really playing against uh, Timofey Mozgov, too. From yeah, Germany. but they like Mozgov know, more. And he's only like center him, eligible. But, I know, and but he's McGee's, injured. Nah. <laughs> I don't love that one. Like, you, I'm a big time believer in Stan Van Gundy, and that's why I think Andre Drummond's going to have an amazing year this year. He was great on the glass and scoring for never having a play run for him last year. Now that he's actually playing in a system with a guy who knows what to do, Stan Van Gundy, as we all know, when Dwight Howard finally got understands tutelage, he really took off, and I think that that's going to be the same thing that happens with so Drummond this year. So yeah. like Dwight, yeah. uh, uh, Drummond will also miss a whole bunch of free throws. Yeah, it'd be he's awesome if he shoots him. 45%. That would be a <laughs> great year. Uh, and I'm going with Wolves backup, uh, Gorgie Jang, as my sleeper. This is uh, solely based on who's in front of him, and that's Pekovic, because he gets injured a lot. And if he does, maybe don't draft Jang, but when Peck gets injured, you see the news on NBA.com, go get Jang, because as a starter last year, 12 and 12, give you some blocks. I mean, when he gets the minutes, he performs. We saw him in international basketball. He played great for Senegal. So someone, again, as a sleeper to keep an eye on. Special spot in my heart for, for Gorgie, because my <laughs> fantasy team name this year, very simple, Gorgie Jenga. He's a real solid pickup. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Let's get to the bus quickly here. A lot of guys that either coming back from injury. Well, a whole lot of guys. A lot of guys with great hair. Coming back from injury. <laughs> My Nerlens. My bust is Nerlens Noel. I love Nerlens, but he should not be ranked 47. You can't fall in love with the rookie. Sixers playing is good. Nerlens not going to be 47th ranked. Lee Chandler. Tyson Chandler missed 43 games the last two seasons. 27 last year. He's not the player he was a couple of years ago. Bergel for Trey. He gets hurt a lot. He turns 32 a week into the season, and he has less to do this year. Yeah, and same thing. The whole injury scare with me. Brooke Lopez. Look, when he plays, he's 18-6, and six, locked in, but... He just doesn't play a whole lot. He's got foot problems. Screams Yao Ming to me. The DNP injury I do not want. As uh, It's not, unfortunately, one of my categories in Yahoo. But we got to take one more break. When we return, Kristen Ledlow and the starters reunited once again. You don't say. We'll explain in two. Hope the Bongo game comes back to you. Welcome back to the starters. There it is, guys. October 24th. The Starters Fantasy Draft Recap. We're going to be doing our draft very, very soon. Kristen Ledlow in the mix. Yes. Les Fresh. Comedian Joe Mandy. All of us. Can't wait to duke it out. Oh, even, our lineup. even our producers and directors are going to be in this <laughs> thing. So that's going to be a lot of fun again. October 24th. We'll sort of recap the craziness that goes down within that draft. But forget the 24th. Let's talk about tomorrow. We start the Starters Season Previews. 72 burning questions about the upcoming season. We're going to break this into nine parts. It's going to be a blast. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, tune in tomorrow. Thanks for joining us today. And remember, you can look at it as a best before date or you can look at it as a pretty good after date. <laughs> Race tonight, people.